We cannot go around Yisrael. There are many that because they understand not the living power of Torah, the Ruach, they are trying to assess Yah and uh, enter into his presence by the ladder. And they are not entering in because it is the power of the ladder. When Yah had calves, when he writes it, it is the power of the ladder that kills. When Yah says it, he means it. And they are trying to assess. They are trying to approach his throne. And you're not going to approach him unless it is an, uh, a living offering. It must be an offering that has high life, substance of his breath that meets his standards. And trying to live the letter of the Torah, there is no power of his re'ach. We need the Edah, the testimony of Yeshua Hamashiach. For by the offering of the dam, the blood, then all of our hatta, our sin, is forgiven. There is no cleansing any other way. And that is one reason my prayer, my desire that Yah must raise up the nobi, the men of strength. Not these immature nitwits. They're immature, they're foolish, they are stubborn with stupidity. They have no breadth of experience of the life of Yah. And they're twisting the minds of many like our minds have been twisted. It is one thing that we as a nation, a people, we must eradicate out of our consciousness things that have been predicated upon a lie. You can never get truth out of a lie. There are those that say there is a bit of truth in every lie, but the whole objective of a lie is to deceive you. You cannot get the power of Torah in a spurtly injecting lies in that. And that's what we find today. We find those that will keep the Shabbat, but they reject his name. There are those that say they're Hebrews and they change their names to Hebraic name, but they reject his name. And they will say that we're in a culture of Babel, of heathens, so we talk like the heathens. Well, I am in Yerushalayim. When I am in Rome, in Bavel, uh, then I act like Bavel. I am not in Rome. I am not in Bavel. I am in the city where his shalom is taught. So all of my activities are carried out in Yerushalayim. I am not a part of their establishment. I will not teach the way these vile men teach. I will not instruct us as a nation the way they instruct. That is why the simplicity of the Torah we don't understand. And Yah never meant it to be complicated for Yisra'ah. It's because of the hearts of these wicked men. These men that are rah. They're evil. Their conscience have been seared with the hot iron. They understand not the mishpat. The judgment of Almighty Yahweh. But those that seek Him, those that bakhash, inquire, intercede, they're refreshed by Him, then they understand all things. Not some things, He said, understand all things. They understand all things. They understand all things. That's why this putrefied generation, a mind, that has been shaped by the powers of hell. Uh, they have no reverence, no order for that which is of Yah. You think that when the witnesses come, they're going to receive them, the id of Yah. They will speak. Their mouths shall be filled with the fire of the coal of Yah. You think they're going to receive them. They're going to damn them. Destroy them. And kill them. So when any man speaks against the flow of this corruption... 
He has perceived as one that has no compassion. He doesn't know Yah. It is this damnable generation that doesn't know Yah. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be uh, taken off tracks on the teaching that I want to begin today. But it is vitally important to inject those things that I've already injected. I want to begin the series of teaching. I don't know how long it's going to take because first of all, we must eradicate our minds of this vile concept by this religious harlots. And things that we have learned in the walk of what we call Christianity or the religious arena that has nothing to do with the Torah of Yah. And in order to understand the emphasis of the mark of man and the beast, we must be at the better sheets. And I declare unto you today, if I do not point out things to you today with great simplicity, and believe me, I will be as brazen and bold to say, you have never heard it like this. That's somewhat of an obnoxious spirit, isn't it? No, it is the boldness that I declare this in today. It is the revelation that you shall receive if you shemach, if you hear. And if you have heard it like this before, then inform me. Because our concept of this, it has been shaped by a religious whore that is not faithful. And so she complex or makes things complex that our minds cannot grasp it. Your mind shall grasp this today. And the only way I can uncover the tentacles of hell you will understand the composition of this mind. You will understand the composition of the six, six, six. You will know. You will not get all that today, but in the course of time, you will get it. And you will understand. And so my desire today is that you grant me the strength that I may teach this as a more, a man that is a studious in the Torah that breaks down every small detail that we tend not to give attention to. And there is where we have missed the markings of Almighty Yah. Because we don't give attention to details. We really don't look at the substance of that which we think we understand. And the definitive of that has been declared by our own ignorance. It has not been declared through the knowledge of the matter when one has the knowledge or the da'at of any matter. He is, uh, he is saturated with understanding of that circumstance to its finite details because his mind has, through the process of the Ruach HaKodash, he has done the analytical research out of the book. Not the writings of man, but out of the book. We must shemak and hear Yisraya. And if you never listen, I want you to listen as I began this teaching by the will of Yah only to Yisraya. I'm not trying to intrigue anyone. I'm not trying to show us that I have some mastery of the skills of the knowledge of Torah because I don't. But I do master that, what Yah has put in my bosom. I master that. There are things that there are men that are excellent in their speech on, but this, what he puts in me, uh, how does he do that? Because he stirs up my mind. I cannot get rest. He stirs up my bosom. I cannot lay the book down. He stirs up my conscience, uh, whereby when I am awake, it's on my mind. Whether I'm laboring or sleeping, uh, it is on my mind. Yeah. I don't care what I'm doing. Yeah. I wish I could preach some of the profound messages that in my times of separation from all things uh, that he speaks in my mind by his Torah. I wish I could just speak it whether I'm exercising or working. 
that I may listen to those messages to share with Israel. I want to begin this teaching again. We greet you all, wherever you are listening from your homes. We want you all to be quiet. We want you to rescind, rest in your sure Hamashiach, that we may understand this teaching in its simplicity, that it may bring a great refreshing unto Yisra'ya, the mark or the oath. And that is what the mark is. It is an oath. And the Torah throughout the chronicles of Torah, it teaches this mark of the beast and man. It is simply that we find those that will go to Gilyana and they will give us some kind of perceived interpretation of what is said. You cannot understand Gilyana, the book of Revelation, unless you understand from Bereshit to there. And you must always go back. So I'm going to begin here in the book of Ephesians or Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. I want to deal with the Naktara. That's what it is. The mark of the beast. Hallelujah. And this system that we are in, this bohemoth, of this behemoth, it is a mind or it creates a conscience that is depraved, it is vile, it has no consciousness of Almighty Yah. It doesn't teach that. It doesn't instruct us in the power of Torah, even those that Hashatan has raised up. In the plethora of religious uh, organizations, uh, they have no understanding of the wisdom of Torah. Very few men, that's why Yahshua only chose 12. He chose 12, and he knew that one of them among him, uh, he was the zira of the seed of who? Of Isa. We will find out. Even the progeneration of Isa, how it came about. I want to assure us here, Yisraya, as Shaul speaks to Ephesia, Ephesia, the gathering of the elect there in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And as he instructs them of this hatam, this mark that is affixed on Yisraya, this is our assurance. I want to show us this, that I may point out to us the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast. He speaks to them in verse 13. He says, in whom, whom have we trusted in? We have trusted in the revelation of Almighty Yahweh uh, through the power of the presentation of Yahshua HaMashiach. In whom you also, but that you trusted you have great confidence. You are assured of this testimony. You also trust it. After that, you heard your shemak, the dabah, the word of truth. What is the word of truth? It is the revelation of Torah. It is the understanding, the wisdom of the Torah of Yah. And we must shemak. And when one shemak, it is one that perceive in the ayin, in their spiritual and natural senses, it is of Yah. With perfect faithfulness of obedience uh, to carry it out, to obey it, to live by it, uh, that that be the driving force uh, of their lives. The Torah is not the driving force of the life of Yisrael. We have been impregnated by a conscience and a mind that is totally depraved. And when we get to the conclusion of this, you will understand. Six, six. Six. It is not this uh, cauldry uh, of misguided information that has been flowed or flowing throughout the world today because uh, you must begin at the beginning to understand. And I will point it out and I will show you Yisraya. In whom you also trusted that you heard the word of Torah. He said the Mizorak or the message of his uh, salvation, his Yahshua. In whom... Also, after that, you believed. We have confidence of the testimony. We believe. 
We trust the testimony of Yan Yoshua. He said that we were khatam. There was a seal affixed upon us with the ruach hachodesh of his daba, his promises, his word. We were hatam. There was a seal, we were sealed by Almighty Yah. Who is the pledge from Yah? Yeshua is the pledge. It is the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the pledge of Yah, that He has affixed His Hatam, He has affixed His seal upon His people. Who is the pledge from Yah of our future inheritance until the day of Gula Geula, or redemption of the purchased possession, our bodies, to the Tefillah or the Tehillah of his Skadol. Yeshua, the power of Almighty Yah. He is the essence of our praise unto the mighty power, the great splendor, and the honor of Yah. We must understand, Yisrael, everything that Yah has created, it has a hatam, it has a seal. It is a fix for a time and a season for one purpose, and that is the judgment seat of Yah. And there are things that Yah has done. He says, I don't want you to touch that. And I will show us that. He said, leave that to me. I don't want nobody to touch it. I don't want your mouth to touch it. I don't want your words to touch it. I want you to leave it alone. That's mine. And so we have been sealed until the day of our Geulah, the day of our redemption. He confirms this later on here in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. Chapter 4, verse 30. He commands us that we watch how we speak because every idle word we're going to be judged by. That our concepts be developed by the Torah delight. So he said, don't allow certain things that uh, corrupt you to proceed out of your loins. Why? In verse 30, he tells us not and grieve not the Ruach HaChodesh of Yah. He said, by the power of his Ruach, whereby you are hatam, you are sealed for Yam Ha. You are sealed until the day of redemption. That we have been sealed until the day of redemption. Do we think that the mark of 666 is something that shall prevail in the latter time? Do we think that it is something new? We must understand the very design of that. And the only way you're going to understand the design of that, we must go back to the very sheet. And once we go back to the beginning of all things, uh, we will begin to lay in place uh, with wisdom and understanding of the design of that. We have been sealed. We have been hatam. There has been a mark of fix upon Yisrael until the day uh, of redemption. It is when Yachahan saw Yoshua in Gileana 14, uh, he saw him with the multitude uh, standing on Mount Zion. And he saw the 144,000 with him. Having his Abba, his father's name, written in their foreheads. They have been sealed. The Hatam, as a mark. That we must understand the validity of it. And the power of it. And the only way we must be gone in the book. Quickly to Gileana Revelation. It's one thing about the matra of Yah. It is a marking whereby it shows that there is a target. And I will prove that out for us, Yisrael. I want to take my time and teach this emphatically in a way that you will understand. I want to speak from Revelation 13 verse 18. I want to explain this simplicity of this one verse quickly. The instructions of the messenger of Yah, he says, here is the hukmah. Here is wisdom. We must understand, Yisrael, that wisdom is the skillfulness of our spiritual walk to walk in the power of the fullness of the mind of Almighty Yahweh. That's why Shaul said, let the same mind 
that was at Yoshua HaMashiach, uh, we must have that same mind. There is only one mind that combat the princes and the powers of the earth, uh, and that is the mind of God because uh, he created them. He created their substance, uh, their power, and their ability. Uh, and it takes a mind that is much superior. And that's the mind of Yah. We must develop that mind uh, through the teaching and understanding uh, of Torah. That's why Shaul said, when you believe, uh, ha imat, when you believe the truth, uh, you were sealed with the promise of Almighty Yah until the day of Yehullah, until the day of redemption. And our minds must be sealed. Our minds must have the written Torah of Yah in it. Because without that, uh, there is only one thing left. And only one thing that is written there, and it is the mark of the beast and man. He is the wisdom of Yah. Let him that has been we that have the power to discern, we have understanding of Torah, the wisdom of Torah. We have, through our attentiveness, we have been attentive unto what Yah has commanded. That's the only way you go to understand. Miss Jane Goodall, there in Africa, she spent all of her life studying the chimpanzees. And so she had to be attentive to them every day of her life. 10, 15 hours a day in the jungle, watching the chimpanzees. For over 35 years, the woman spent there. So we cannot spend a moment in Torah. I think we have the attentiveness and the readiness to understand the things that are so detailed in the writings of the beginning. You cannot. This is a generation that has not understanding. That must be a fortified of tenderness unto the things of God. You must give energy and strength. Your will must be satisfied with what is written. The enemy has surplaced or supplanted that with things of the flesh. We're not satisfied with what Yah says. Let him that hath understanding. He tells us to suffer, to count. We examine the word so far. It is to express it numerically, exactly, and precise. The so far. You must express it. He said, let him so far. Let him count. Let him count. He said, let him count the mana, the number that which has been assigned. That which has been appointed, Yah has appointed the number now. It is not Hashatan that has appointed the number, it is Yah. And if I do not prove that in Torah, everything that I said today is a damn lie. All right? I must prove it. Hallelujah. It must be proven by Torah. I will begin the process. I must lay a little foundation because our, our minds do not know how to grasp. The beautiful finite things of Almighty Yah. He said, let him count the number of this beast, this vile heva, this unclean thing. For it is the mana. It is the number that has been appointed. And Yah appoints all things. We must find out where this was appointed. We must recognize the spirit, the mind, the conscience. What kind of corruption brought this system about? And if the Torah does not teach us that, it is a lie. It must teach us. It must show us. He has not hid his secrets uh, from his people. He has hidden them from those that think they are prudent and wise. And he has revealed them unto us little babes. And if the Torah doesn't point it out, it is a book that is total callous. It is not of any reference to us. It is not worth the paper it is written on. And that's the fact that's somewhat of a bold statement, man. I must point it out. To your understanding. That you may understand. 
and that you may see. It must have a beginning. This is what has been mana. It has been appointed. It has been affixed. It has been established from the beginning. And we must understand how it was established. What was the magnitude of of the spirit that brought about this kind of mayhem or this kind of fury in the love of Almighty Yom. Hallelujah. For it is the number, the mana of not some. Does it say singular there? It is the number of what? Amen. Come on and you all listen to me. It is the number of what? Amen. Does it say some men? Say it loud, my heart. It says what? A. You sure it says A? Does that imply singular or plural? It says the number of A man. And we must deal with A man. We must deal with the man. A man. He did not say that it is the number of the multitudes. It has this birth in A man. It is the number, it is the mana, it is the appointed seal, it has its fixation, it is the hatam, the seal of a man. And that which has been progenerated from his bosom, and through the, and through the very cunning activity, the seed has been spread abroad, but the fixation, the number is still there. You're not going to find this just by reading. You're not going to find this by spending 15 minutes. It's not coming that way. You're not going to find this watching television all day. It's not coming. He said it is the number of a man. It is vital that we understand that. Yeah. Well, I, I know it seems as though I'm somewhat uh, dramatic. Uh, because what we're dealing with in this hour, it is a dramatic time, Yisraya. It is the... Number of a, a man it is a singular fixation. And everything must add up. Everything must add up to six, six, six. It must add up that way. And we must be gone in better sheet to find out. It is the number of a man and his again, singular. Of his number. Who is this man? Where was he birthed from? Does the Torah speak of him? In the progeneration of his genealogy? It does. And the things that I speak shall surprise you. Because we read but we have. No understanding of what we read. And his number is. Six hundred. Or three scores, six, six hundred, sixty-six, six, six, six. What does that imply, man? Let me give us a little identity of what I am about to show us here. I want you to turn to better sheet. Hallelujah. It is the number of a man. Before you turn there, I, I want to read this. Turn to the book of Marcus Luke. Was your short numbered? You don't have to answer it. I know you don't. Was he numbered? Was he mana? Was he not numbered with the transgressors? Was he not numbered? He had a number affixed to him before he ever set foot on the earth. I want to show us this. It says here in the book of Marcus Luke, Verse chapter 15, verse 28. The power of your sure he has carried Yisraya away all of Yisraya's sins, and they are never to be brought up again. We must, I want to point out this before I move further. The mana. It is a number that uh, a safa that is a fix. It is a seal, it, uh, it is a hatam, it is a mark. And the prophet spoke about this. Uh, even before the time of Yahshua, and it speaks here loudly and clear here, clearly here, in the book of Marcus Luke, Mark 15, 28, and the Katuv, or the Chidve, 
was fulfilled, uh, which says, uh, and you are assured he was, mana, he was numbered with the transgressors. Was he numbered? Was he not numbered with the transgressors? You're going to have to understand. This is vitally important, Yisrael. We like to understand the greatest uh, of things that are complexity just by going to the end. But in order, in order to get understanding of the matter, we must begin at the beginning. He was numbered. He was numbered with the transgressors. The prophets spoke of that. The messengers of Yah. And one that clearly speaks profoundly of that. It is found in the book of Isaiah, Yeshaya, chapter 53. He was numbered. He was assigned. He was appointed. Yeshaya. Chapter 53, verse 12. The prophet speaks of the power of Yahshua, therefore, will I divide. Yah says, I will divide him a portion with uh, Rab, the great of the multitude. And he shall divide the shalal, or the plunder, that which has been retrieved. He says he's going to do it with uh, the strong. He's going to do it with the osum, the mighty, and the vast numeric number of Yisra'ya. He gave... Uh, Abraham a promise that his zero will be as the sand of the sea. You will never be able to number them. You will never be able to number them. You will never be able to put the mana or to point or to fix. That's why the enemy. And that's why a system of hell and of darkness, Hashatan, knows that there is a mark. And there's a mark of man. He is not out to destroy that. But he will destroy that. Because he knows that it is destined to try to get those that have been numbered by Yah. He said, and your zira shall be as the sand of the sea. How can you numerically number the sand of the sea? He is saying that the power of your people or the power of your zira, that man will not be able to find out with his finite intellectual knowledge of searching historical things. It must be revealed. It must be revealed by the power of only one testimony. And that's the testimony of Yahshua Mashiach. Not the testimony of the damn Christos and their damn wicked Jesus. And all of the damn vileness of that. Their damn gods and their damn bells. Because he has poured out his nefesh to Maveth. It is different from Maveth. Then Muth. It is a death that is so violent. And he suffered a violent, cruel death for Yisraya. He has poured out unto us the riches of Yah, of his nefesh in death. And he was, does it say he was numbered? Yes. He was mana, he was assigned. He was a fix for that. Was he a fix for that from the beginning? Yes. Was he a sign for that from the beginning? Yes. So you tell me that the marking of six, six, Six uh, will only come about in the uh, Arif uh, in the last days. Uh, he was mana from the beginning. Uh, it was a fix. Uh, it was uh, it was a seal upon him. Uh, he was numbered. He was numbered, Yisraya. Yah says he was numbered with the Bosha, with the transgressors. One that rebels blatantly and violently against Yah. One that hates Yah. One that despises Yah. They despise his name, his Torah, his Shabbat. These are, are transgressors. They are the Pasha. It is a violent mind. It is a mind that, uh, it, it is, a mind that is strengthened by the hatred for Yah. It is a mind that despises Yah. It is a mind that damns the substance of Yah. It is a mind that would kill you if it could. And it does. So everything that, that is associated with you, this mind rejects it. Your sure was numbered. That's why here's wisdom. The number of the money. The number of this beast. The number of this mind. The number of this conscience. How is the number produced? What is the purpose for the number? We must understand that. We don't understand that we won't understand a damn thing, Israel. We like to rush to the conclusions. We don't want to understand the process. Get to the conclusion. 
he was numbered. So was the number assigned to him when he was born? Or was it there from the beginning? It was there from the beginning. Before Yah ever knew Yisra'ah, were we not numbered? Sure we were numbered. We were sealed. Before you were ever formed in your Ima womb, he yada, he knew you, he had experience with you. You were coveted in his bosom. His breath was in our bosom. His Torah was in Yisrael. And he said, I'll bring the living power of that Torah through the number of the one that has been numbered with the transgression uh, that he may bring revelation of the power of my kingdom. Uh, and in understanding that you rejoice greatly. Hallelujah. Your bosom is satiated and filled with satisfaction uh, of Almighty Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. He was numbered with the Porsche, those that revolt against Yah. And he bare our sins, our hits. Not our chaptabrachit. It is the punishment of our sins. What were carried in the body of Yahshua. He bears our heads. Or the heads of Yisra'ya. You smell it that way. K-H-A-T-E. He bears the heads. It is the guilt and the punishment of our sins. For there could be no sin found in him. He bore in that body the punishment of our sin. He was numbered. If he was numbered to bear in the body uh, the punishment for our sins, then there is a number that one must bear in their body for their hatred toward Almighty Yah. And that's a fact, Yisrael. What is his number? Well, it is the perfect number. It is the number whereby all of Yah's work is completed in that mind. It is the number where Yah, he rests in the comfort of, of that testimony. It is the complete work of Yah. It is the perfect work of Yah. And the number is number seven. That's what it is. For all things in Yah, in your sure will fulfill. It is the complete work of Yah. It is the finished work of Yah. So he bared in his body the hits. He buried in his body the punishment uh, for our sins. That's why he was marred. As I saw King Yeremiah brought out to us. His body was disfigured. Uh, it seems as though there was no light but no bone was broken. So he buried in his body the hates, the sins, our punishment. He buried that. And so those that violently reject ya there's a number it is six 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 it is the ultimate depravity perverse mind it is the ultimate of a mind that is skillful in darkness and i will show you the first and the second ruach of the spirit that permeates this mind is in the book it's written Raise up your messengers, y'all. We need strong men today. He was numbered and he bare our hits. The punishment for the guilt of our sins. Of Rab, of many, of Yisrael. And he made para. He did not just make any kind of intercession. He intrigued Yah. He interposed upon Yah and say their sins and the power of their sin has been paid the price in this living Bible. I have been numbered and so are we numbered. He did not say that there were 146,000, there are only 144,000 and they all are numbered. They all are mana, they are pointed. They, there is a hatam, a seal affixed on them. Uh, just like there's a seal affixed on our mind. When we are led by the ruach of Yah, it shows us the seal uh, of our sonship or our place in Almighty Yah. 
When we are not led by the Ruach of Yah, it shows us that there is some other spirit that is leading us. And the Ruach of Yah leads and guides us into one thing that is all imat, kul imat, all truth. And anyone that say that they're led by Yah's Ruach and they do not embrace all truth, they are damn liars. They're full of their wickedness. They have the sins that permeates in them. They are vicious, they are liars, they are murderers, they are corrupt. I don't give a damn how sweet they talk. I don't care how palatable their conversation intrigues you. It doesn't mean a damn thing to you. I will prove it out. I will prove it out, Miss Lady. Hallelujah. He was number with the transgressors. transgressors and he made Paga for the transgressors for our wickedness he made he interposed upon Yah he was numbered for that and so are we numbered too Yisra'ya if you're sure from the beginning he is the Torah of Yah he is the bosom of Yah and this is a generation that thinks that it's going to get to Yah by rejecting the power of his testimony this is that generation. They think that through the letter of the Torah and they don't give a damn about that. They don't even shema. They don't even keep the Torah. They don't even guard that. They have no concept of the 713 laws uh, or the Torah guidance uh, of statutes and rights of Yah. Believe me, they cannot quote 50 of them. That's why the power of that has been revealed in the power of Yahshua, the testimony. That we are numbered and sealed. We are fixed unto the day of Yehudah. The day of redemption. You cannot retain them. That's why it was a constant going and, and pondering and looking. He has written them in our bosom. And we carry them out uh, precisely by the power of testimony. In our Torah unto you. The things you cannot operate in. You don't have the power to do it. But through your sure I'm sure all things are written of him. In the Torah we can do all things. You cannot carry out the pacifics. You cannot uh, go through with the mandate of Yah. Unless the revelation of that is in our bosom. And that's the only way it can be done through your sure The power of that testimony. It cannot be done any other way. You cannot even circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. The circumcision of Abraham was a shadow of the circumcising of our hearts. Because in that, that is what aroused man. That is what gave him his strength there, Yisrael. He was numbered with the transgressors. The number was not a fix. When he came out the bosom of Miriam, it was a fix before the foundations of the earth. The number 666 was a fix before the foundation of the earth. Now let me begin the process to dismantle things in our minds, what the religious war has taught us, that we will have no concept of this matter. When we began in better sheets, the book of Genesis. This is the beginning of the number 666, or it's inscribing. And you must understand that this equivalent, it denotes one of the most vilest and satanic evil that one could perpetrate in mind. And it cannot come by one's own ability to imagine. There must be a source and a power that is greater than one's own imagination. It has to be greater than that. It has to be one that is very subtle, very powerful. And this is the most depraved, most asinine, the most evil conscience and mind. And you will know that you have the, the very insignia of that in us if we operate in a certain mannerism. I want to begin here in Better Sheet chapter 4. It is the full expression of the mind of Hashotan. That's what it is. It is the full expression. And we're going to see and understand how Shatan's mind, its expression. We're going to understand that in the course of time. It says in Bereshit chapter 4 verse 3, A God, it tells us in the process of time, it came to pass. Yah knows time, doesn't he? He has ordained all things 
in his own time. It says that Cain, he is the one that is the in possession. And he possessed something that was not of the Ruach of Omaria. His name Cain implies possession. And we are a nation of people who are in possession of things that ought not to be in our treasure trove. They ought not to be there, Yisrael. Hallelujah. That Cain brought the fruit of the Adam, uh, of the ground, that which yield uh, from the earth of Yah. And don't you know that we are the earthly vessels of Yah, and what should yield from us is, uh, it should be the Rachim, uh, it should be the Peri, the fruit uh, of the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, yes. Nothing else. In the process of time, he brought the offering from the ground, uh, an offering uh, unto Yah. It is one thing. That Yah has always done for Yisra'ya. He has always awakened his people for the season and the time. That's why his Mo'adim, the feast days of Yah, and you liars that refute that. I will stand against any of you all. I have written a booklet. It is quite extensive. Can we keep the feast days outside of Yerushalayim? I will dispute it. I will debate it with the best of you heathens of hell. So Yah knows the time. He knew that it was the season and the time for the offering to be made. It was just not some day randomly picked. It says in the process, Yah processed the time. Did he not process the first day? The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, sixth day, and the seventh day, did he not rest? Yeah. So in the process of time, Yah knew that it was time for the offering, uh, the one in possession. Uh, he was possessed. Uh, he brought the fruit of the ground. Verse 4, Bereshit, Genesis 4, 4. It says, and Hebel, uh, Abel, uh, he is the breath of Yah. He is the fulfillment of Yah's breath. His name, Hebel, uh, implies the breath. Uh, he is the vapor. He is the, he is the power of the Ruach of Omar yeah, that has life uh, and the generation of that Zira shall not be, never be cut off. Never. It shall never be cut off, Yisrael. Oh, this was from the beginning, the Zira of Abraham. This was not just something Yah invented with Abraham. It was from the Bereshit. Hallelujah. And so Hebel also he brought the firstling uh, of his flock and the fat thereof. And Yah had Shua, he had respect. We think that Yah doesn't have respect for the offerings of those that do with great delight. We are fools. Yah has no respect a person uh, in order for him to bring that which was honorable unto Yah. His love had to be right. And so Yah had Shua, he had preference, he had love, he had honor for the gift of Hebel. The one that breathed the breath of Yah's substance. He is the breath of Yah's power. He is the breath of the suffering of Yahshua HaMashiach. And although it seemed as though that his zira was cut short, it was not cut short at all, Yisrael. I will proceed. Hallelujah. So he had regard for that. But it said, but to Kayan, to his offering, Yah did not even respect it. He had no sha'a. He had no respect for it. And Kayan, it says that he was hara. And Kayan was very rah. Who was his wrath against? He was kindled his anger. Was kindled against Yah. There was a hatred in his bosom uh, against Yah. I want us to begin to see the development uh, of this uh, fixed uh, mana, this uh, 666. Uh, it is a conscious today when Yah speaks to us uh, by living Torah, then there is a hara. There is a burning uh, indignation of our anger. We become hostile uh, and our countenance reveal uh, our hatred for Yah. So he burned in his hara, in his anger, and his disluck, and his distaste for murder Yahweh. And it says that his ponim, his countenance, it fell or it nafal. It nafal. A sadiq man, he nafal. He fought seven times. He falls to the, to, 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 to the violence of his own flesh, the death to impel it. 
He falls to that. And it says that his countenance fell. The hatred was so emphatic against Yah that his inward parts were stirred with great hatred. He knew that Hebel was the breath of Yah. So did Hashatan. Yahshua is the breath of Yah. Israel is the breath of Yah. We are the Hebel of Yah. He has seek out and search the breath of Yah's life from out of the Ulam Hezal. And so his countenance, his expression was of great hatred. His countenance in the fall of death, of violence against Yah. That I will kill you. I will destroy everything about you. We're going to see the conclusion in the end of this matter. His countenance fell. The violence of Maveth, of death, consumed him. Hallelujah. And Yah says to Kayan, why are you hara? Why are you burning in this anger of hatred? This conscience is one that burns in his anger of hatred for the name of Yah, for the Shabbat, for the Moadim of Yah, for Yah's correction, for Yah's voice to speak to them, for the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. It is a man that burns that. With hara, it is a, it is a, it is an anger of such hatred sir, that it has no control at all, Yisrael. It is violent against Yah. That is the nature of man. Yah made man on the sixth day, didn't he? Did he not? Uh, he was short of perfection, uh, and Yah knew that. That's another teaching in this process. I will deal with that. But He created him on the sixth day, and on the seventh day He rested. And the number that is affixed unto man is six. And the number that is affixed unto this bohemoth or the man is six. And this laba, that one that uh, has a virable distaste and a hatred for Yah. When it hears the Torah of Yah, it becomes asinan, the hara, the hot displeasure. And the anger began to rise up. And there are fruit that shall proceed out of that one. So you ask him, why are you that way, man? He says unto him, if you do yatab, if you do well, if you do what it takes to please me, is this a generation that's doing what it takes to please you? What men today, they want to mesmerize people with all kinds of equations. They say, well, that the words uh, of the pontiffs or the popes mitre, uh, the writings, uh, it translates uh, into the Grameen or the numerics uh, of 666. They said the same thing about Mr. Barack Hussein Obama. They said it about Reagan. They all, there are many things and names and numbers that will imply that, but it's beyond that damn juvenile. This is what the world teaches you. This is what the religious whore. This is what these dogs out of hell, these religious trained wicked minds teach you. But it's not according to the book. I'm going to teach you what the prophet said. If you do your tab, you do well. Shall you not be accepted? Shall you not share? Shall he not accept you if you do well? If you do your top, your mind is to please your, Shall he not accept you, Yisra'ya? Will he not elevate you and cause you to rise up above of the circumstances? Sure he will. He says, and if you do well, if you do well, then he says, if you do not well, then hit. Sin lies at the door. It lies at the pita. It lies at the door. If you do not well, it's because of sin. The entrance of your bosom there is sin. And we know that Yahshua was numbered with the transgression. Transgression. And he has hit, he has bared the guilt of our sins. 
He says, you're going to have to bear this sin. He said, because sin lies at, the, at your door, at your entrance. And it's desire, and the desire of sin is for you. But you should rule over it. You should have power if you have the breath of Yah in you to command and to overtake the powers of darkness. He goes on to say, Yah and Kayan talk with Habel. He talked with his brother, the one that had the breath of Yah's life in him, as they began to conversate. And it came to pass in Yah's appointed time, when they were in the field, hear me, Yisra'ya, that Kayan rose up against Hebel, his Ach, and he, Harach, he murdered him. He destroyed him. He tried to annihilate him, but yet his blood cried out. He destroyed, he, Habel, Habel, he murdered him. And he slew him. And Yah said to Kayan, he's a murderer. He's a murderer. And look what comes out of his mouth. And Yah says to Kayan, where is Habel, my breath? And he says, I yada, I know not. That is synonymous with man. That we are liars, we tell lies, and we lie without the fear of how much hatred in our bosom is against Yah. We perpetrate, we develop. He says, I don't know. I don't know a damn thing about him. Why are you asking me? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Am I the one that guard for him? Am I his guardian? He spoke from the belly of the mana, the mark of the beast. How do you know that? Did he lie? Did he murder? Yes. Did he kill his brother? Yes. Did he harag? Did he slay him? Did he destroy him? Did he bring his, his blood down to the grave? Did he do that? I want to speak out of the Brits, Melah, out of the Brits Hadassah, the renewed covenant. It says here in the book of Yakahan 8, 43. This is the nature of one of the aspects of the nature of Hashatan and all of the vile spirits. It was manifested in Kayan quickly, Yakahan, John, chapter 8, verse 43. You're sure speaking to that mind and that conscience, uh, the mana, the mark of that mind where it has been seared, the conscience, uh, the will, the purpose, the desire, the outward expression. There's a mark. Do not our countenance show the mark. Of our minds, it expresses us in our thoughts. Yeah. Sure, it does. Yeah. You can tell when you don't want to be bothered with someone like, What's your problem, man? You can tell when someone lies. Yeah. Our forefathers had the ability to know that. We don't understand a damn thing today because uh, we have the mind, we have a little bit of that Kayan in us. Yeah. Look what Yoshua says. Yoshua yeah. 843. He said, why do you not understand my, by my speech? Why we don't understand the testimony of Yahshua? Why don't we accept the testimony of Yahshua? He says, uh, even because uh, you cannot, shimach, you cannot hear my word. You cannot hear what I speak. He said, you are of your father. You are of your father. You have been birthed by a zira, a seed. You are of your father, Hashatan. He said, and the lust of your father. You lust after the will of your father when you do. Uh, he declares he was a murderer. He was one that Rosach. Was Kayan a murderer? Did he murder Habel? He brings clarity. And I will point that out in this teaching. He was a murderer. He tried to destroy the breath of Yah. Habel breath. The breath. And he breathed into man. His ruach. 
and he became a living nefesh. And that is what this murderous spirit does. It tries to destroy. And so what uh, Hashatan has done uh, through the zir of Chayan, he has raised up an entity of darkness that hates Yah, that despises Yah, that rejects his truth, his Torah, his wisdom, and his understanding. He said he was a murderer, he was a rasach, he was one that murdered, and that rasach is just not one committing a second or third degree murder, it is premeditated. When one is charged with first degree murder, it is because they have premeditated. And that is what the rasach is. It is a murder and a murdering that is premeditated. You tell me that Kayan did not premeditate the death of Hebel? You tell me that Hashatan did not rise up to try to overthrow the breath of Almighty Yahweh? It is premeditated. And we bear in our loins, in our bodies, in our minds, this premeditated murdering of one another. If you hate Yisra'ya without a cause, you're a damn murderer. You have murdered Yisra'ya. You are of your father, the devil. You have the sure seal of Hashatan that six. You have the seal of man. And the other six is the complete seal of total annihilation. And Yah says, hell no. This is mine. I don't want you to have to judge a damn thing. It's mine. I have none of them for one thing. I shall hunt them and kill every last damn one of them. I will kill the damn babies, the mamas, the old ones. I will kill them all. I don't believe that. Well, I will prove it. I don't give a damn if you don't like me. It is a premeditating of this vile act. He was a rasach, a murderer from the beginning. He did not live. He, he did not walk in the beauty. He abode not in the truth. Does it say the truth? And we know what that is. In Tehillim 141 and 150. We know his commandments, his instructions. He did not abide in the truth. Let me read that quickly. Well, I'm going to finish up this today. I don't care how how exhausted my body is that doesn't mean a damn thing I want to read this quickly to helium 119 hallelujah for you that may be new joining us hallelujah it says here in to helium 119 and verse 100 let me begin here at 140 it says yeah your word is very pure it is taho, it is clean, there is nothing unclean. Therefore, your servants or your abbot, they have a, they love it. They have a pure desire for it. He says that, that we said, I am small and despised. Was not that we the beloved of Yah? Did not Kayan despise Hebel? Does not the mark of a man despise uh, the Torah of Yah? Does not the mark of Hashatan despise the Torah? He did not abide in truth, did he? All right, then. We're going we're gonna to bring it home, Yisra'ya. You don't get the concept by reading one verse or, or, the, or, or, the, or the line upon line. You must get precepts and precepts. Here a little and there a little. He said, am I not small and hated? Sonne, am I not despised? Yet, do I not forget your precepts? I don't forget your Torah. He said, your sadika is an everlasting, it is olam viat. It never ceases. It is an everlasting righteousness. And thy Torah is what, or your law is what? The truth, or just says truth. It's imachah, isn't it? Did he not say in Yakahan? What did I read? It says uh, in Yakahan 8.44, And he abode not in truth or the truth. It says he abode not in the truth, right? So in order to stand to have the clarity of that, to have the definity of that, we must understand there's two witnesses here, isn't it? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. We have two, right? We have two witnesses, do we not? His Torah is true. Let me show you another witness then, all right? Hallelujah. 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 In the same chapter, uh, David says here, 
in the same chapter of 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 hallelujah of 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 uh Tehillim. hallelujah he says here in verse verse 50 150 they they draw close to me oh maria that follow after lies of mischief they are far from your torah was not the mind of Kahan far from the torah of yah Yah says, uh, if you do well, if you do well, then all is well. But if you do not well, uh, then sin. What is sin? It is going to mine aggressively, uh, assault uh, the Torah of Yah. And that, um, that mine assaulted the Torah of Yah. It transgressed. It's a sure sign that's the mark of man. Because man, uh, in, in all of his laws, uh, he is vile, he is corrupt. He is a murdering, lying beast. Just like this damn man, this beast that's running uh, for the Republican candidate uh, for the nomination, uh, Mr. Herman McCain. Uh, he is a dirty damn bastard. He is a lying dog. Yeah. He just don't have enough integrity to say, I've been a dirty bastard. Yeah. To cause his wife to go through that, I would, I would spit on a bastard like that. He has no repentance. A big Baptist lying dog, Mr. McCain, Mr. Cain is. Uh, he's a dirty bastard. Just say I was wrong, woman. I'll make up our I will amend all of my ways. I'm wrong. I cannot hide it. This damn liar, he's a dirty bastard. See, this is the spirit of this wicked whore. We think it's Roman Catholicism, it is Judaism, it is Islam, it is Hinduism, it is all of the damn isms. There's only one truth. And that is the Torah of Omar. Yeah, there's only one revelation. You don't get a damn thing uh, by reading the letter. That's why you're still walking in sin. Uh, you're self-righteous. Uh, you're vile and you're ignorant in all of your ways. Uh, and the only uh, way we're going to understand the power of this, there must be the aid of God, the testimony. And it must be vivid and alive. Uh, and we rejoice in that. We're so full of sin. We're dead. Uh, we are trespassed against you. There is no vile, viciousness, no life in us at all. Uh, I was reading the Observer this morning and I saw the pictures of this, this person that uh, gave and gives away every year around twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. And they stamp the $100 bills uh, with secret uh, Santa. And I saw all the pictures, four or five pictures where they give people 100 and the people were weeping. Uh, some just, ah! But he has Mark York sure. He is our head. And we don't give a damn about y'all. That's why we still murder and lie like a damn beast. You're not going to get by. It is a sure sign of the beginning or the nature of six. You're incomplete. Your mind is not, it has not been thoroughly furbished by the Torah. You're wrong, man. I'm right. The word is right. I'm going to prove it out in the end, even the teachings today, all right. Hallelujah. Yeah. It says, uh, they are far from your Torah. Verse 151, you are near, O Yah. And some of your commandments, he said, all of your mitzvah, these are the mitzvah. You're a damn dirty liar if you say that you can have a God before him. You're a damn dirty liar as Isaac and Yaramaya taught us. You do not create. And they created a God out of, their, out of their gold earrings and all of that. He showed unto us expressively why the earrings. It was a sure, it was a token, it was a seal. It was an oath of the damn captivity, of the damn wickedness of their forefathers. Yah says he will put earrings on us. He's going to put nose rings on us. He's going to put rings on our fingers. Let's wait for that day. You don't put the damn earrings on. You don't put the damn rings on. You don't dress yourself in the jewelry. These damn heathens out here call themselves Hebrews. Earrings bigger than women. They're damn heathens. They're not the sons of Ibram. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says uh, all of your commandments are truth they are truth concerning your testimony i have known of all that thou has founded them forever they establish is not all of his commandments truth you think he just come up with the commandments when he or his mitzvah with moshe they were there from the beginning there's no beginning with yah he has no better sheath hallelujah 
So we know that uh, the mark of man, that this nature that hates Yah, that despises Yah, that gets angry with Yah, it is a nature that has not been completed. And a nature that has not been thoroughly completed, it has not been refurbished, it has not been taught the mandate or the discipline of Torah, and because it has not the testimony of Yahshua. It has not the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the seal or the number of the beast is six. Uh, and we know that is so because uh, it is one that nurtures in the murdering and the lying spirit. He was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, when Yah made him from his first uh, 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 concept of his appearance, uh, he had this hatred for Yah. He wanted to exalt himself above uh, Yah. We are not that way. We're damn liars. We want to exalt ourselves above the Torah of Yah. We want to say that uh, well, he doesn't mean that you're damn liars. Uh, he means what he says. Uh, we want to find avenue for our damn flesh. Uh, am I my brother's keeper? Hell yes. We watch for each other. If your brother, brothers in the world do that. You let someone tag a brother. Boy, oh, he, he got, there were families that had 10 brothers. You mess with one, you were in trouble. And they all were packing. Oh, they said, man, I went down there and old day robbers bust me in the mouth. Let's go, baby, boy. Let's get it, Jimmy. Get Bobby. Let's roll, baby. Let, put it in. And they were pack, and they were pack heavy. And when they walked down and saw David there, he began to tremble. He began, his feces began to fall. He, he began to urinate in his clothes because he knew he was in trouble. He knew that. They had a reputation. And everybody knew them boys. You don't mess with any of them. And so I tagged the weakest one. And that's what Hashatan thinks he's done. He has gotten the weakest of Yah's creation. But he still gave them dominion. He gave man dominion and power over the earth. So that sure sign of a man's mark in it, it is one that despises Yah. It hates Torah. And the, and the fulfillment or, or the consecration or, or, of that power in one, it is, the, it is the subtlety of this beast mind. It does not abide in the Torah. Our minds don't stay in the Torah, does not It doesn't walk in the Torah. We don't delight in the Torah. We don't run for the Torah. We're not seeking Torah truth. We don't walk that, Yisra'ya. And we lie because of that. There's nothing more vile than a liar. Kayan, one of the first things out of his mouth. Am I my brother's keeper? Where's your brother? Why should I know? You find that among Israel, you know that there's a spirit there. That it is one of death. It is not completed in Torah. It has not been shaped. And it is not the will of the Torah in that mind. I don't give a damn what your lie is. It's a lie. Can't go around the Torah. I don't give a damn what your lie is. It's a lie. And the one thing that Yah did not do, he did not back up his lies. He said, I got you. We're moving right along. Hallelujah. Yah Kahan says that he was a murderer from the beginning. He abide not in truth. And he says, there is no truth in him. Was there truth in Kayan's mouth when Yah asked him, where is your brother? Did he lie? Was there no? Yah knew that there was no truth in him. That one that is sealed, there is no truth in them. That is one of the sure signs of 666. Six, six. There is no truth in him. He said there is no truth in him when he speaks a lie. When one speaks a lie, Ka'an spoke a lie. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own will, for he is a liar and he is the father of that. When you find that spirit where it birth lies. Do you understand when it birth lies? There is a birthing of that in one. When people lie and they lie without conscience. Kayan, he was one that was in possession. He was possessed by hell. He was possessed by the enemy of Yah. And in that possession, he had a hatred 
toward Almighty Yah. He had a hatred for the Torah. He had a despising of the magnificent excellence of the breath of Yah. That's why we despise those that tell us of our ill. That's why we reject them. We speak of Gansa and our countenance nephil. There's a violence upon us that we are ready to murder, to kill, and to destroy. Why? Because there is no Torah. There is no truth in us. We shall not murder. We shall not hate. We shall not despise despise Yisra'ya. When you despise Yisra'ya, you despise Yah. It is the sign. It is the sure number of Hashatan. He is incomplete. Six. It is a mind of depravity. It is a depraved mind. He was a liar from the beginning and he did not abide in the Torah of Yah. If you don't abide, if you don't make that your home, you will become one of the most prolific liars of all. Where did the Nama began? Can I show you that Yah sealed this in the book that men of understanding would be able to point us to this? I want to show you something simple. You have read it countless of times. Uh, some of you are never at all because you never read it. You never pick the book up. But I want to show you here in the loins of Kayahan where the number or its birth manifested in the earth among the nations and people. Here in the book of Genesis, back there, verse 17, chapter 8, verse 17, chapter, hallelujah, Genesis chapter 4, verse 17. It says, and Ka'an, he knew he yada his wife. I want you to hear this now. And she conceived, and she bared unto him Inach, Hanach, and he built a city. Look at the first desire, and he named, or he called the city after his name, the name of his son, Inach. That's what he did. He said, if you do not well, it's because sin or pride lies at the door. He named the city after him. Now that was his firstborn. Keep me up numerically, all right? His first one, wasn't it? And Enoch was born unto him Arat. Some of these names, they have no clarity in meaning what they define in the Hebraic speech. It says, uh, and Arad, he birthed unto him uh, Mehujael, which was the second, and Mehujael birthed unto him Methuselah, and Methuselah birthed unto him Lemech. Now we're going to see the manifestation of that power in Lemech, where he was the first one of the seed of the earth to take more than one wife. More than one wife. Hallelujah. This is the fourth generation. The fourth now. The fourth generation, we're dealing with numerics. This is the fourth generation uh, of Chayan. It is says, and Lemech, this generation, uh, he being the fifth lineal, lineal uh, descent from Chayan, uh, which implies, uh, I'm powerful. He took to him uh, two wives. And he named one was Eda, and the name of the other was Zillah. And Eda, this is the sixth generation of Kayan. And Eda, the ornament, she birthed unto him Yabal. And out of that, he was the father of such that dwells in tents and such as having cattle. And his brother name was Yubal, uh, Yubal, the stream that flows. Uh, he was the father of all such that handles the organ uh, and the string instruments, the harps. And Zilla, Zilla she also bared uh, Tubakain, Tubakayain, an instructor of every artifact in brass and iron. And the sister that she bared. Uh, was Tubakayim, which implies loveliness. This is the sixth generation 
of Cain, of Cain. And it stops there. I have searched the lineage of the Torah. And it stops there. You find no more history. It stops at the sixth generation. Six, the number of man. There is no seventh generation in Torah that identifies the lineage of Kayan. You will find it with Abraham through the seed of Dawid. He is the only man in Torah whereby the lineage of his generation is stops at the sixth generation. And there's only one that God raised up that could give us insight on that. You have to search to find this out. You're not going to find this out by reading books. Because the deceivers and these liars and these Lord Baal pompous and these damn Lord Jesus pompous, they don't have the conscience of Yahshua. You're not going to find this in the book. It's going to take a meticulous study and you're going to have to delve into the Torah. You're going to have to set up late at night. And then when the light comes over the witness of the power of that testimony of Yahshua, you will know that so, yeah. His generation ends at the lineal sixth generation. For in that generation or in that law, in that, in that people, there is no complete work at all. But somehow, his zira, his seed, has been massed among the lineage of Yah's heritage. And only one Nobi, his name is Hanach. He was the only one that could bring insight to us as a nation as to why things are what shall be. And the reason for this and what shall be eradicated out of the earth in order for us as a people of Zion to rejoice before the presence of Yah. Can I proceed a little farther? Can I go farther? All right. Appreciate that. Hallelujah. I want to read here from the book of Hanach. Enoch. Hallelujah. I want to share with you, my friends, the mark. The reason for this mark of the beast. The reason for the mark. Why is it? What is the purpose behind it. Can I share this with you from the book of Hanak, the book of Enoch? I would have begun at chapter 22 and verse 1. As this messenger of Yah, as he moved in the Ruach of Yah to receive the testimony of the things of this time that were to come, he begins to utter with great preciseness there must be a witness of what Hanak says here in the Torah of writings that we are so accustomed to or it has no validation at all as far as I'm concerned. And so as I read the books that are lost, they must have validation in my own consciousness as to what is written in the Torah of life. It must show me the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. And it must do it profoundly it must do it uh, with a wisdom that even a fool could understand. So he began to write unto us, Yisra'ah, for our understanding in the book of Hanach, 22.1. He says, I as Hanach, then I, he said, as Yah progressed me through the course of these events, I went to another place. And he saw one by the name of Rufuel, Rufuel, Rufuel. Rufuel, Rufuel, or you can enunciate it, Rufael, Rufael, the Melach. He showed to me the Yam of the west side of the great high mountain of the hair of Yah, this place, this mountain of hard rock. Why from the west? Is that vital? Does it have importance? We must search the Torah. I want to show you the importance of that. Why? Why from the West? When I see things like that, immediately my mind began to ask questions of Torah. Not questioning Yah whether the accuracy of it is right. He said he took me up and he showed me the very power, the very heritage of Abraham. And so the Torah, he showed me that from the West. Listen, turn quickly. You have this in better sheets. Hallelujah. What's so important about this? The Yam of the West. I want to show you this. Genesis chapter 12 verse 7. You're not going to understand the mark of the beast 
by understanding 666 and, and the pontiff's uh, his mida. No. It says here in Genesis chapter 12 verse 7. And Yahweh, Almighty Yah, appeared unto Avram and said, To your Zirah, I will give this land. As he journeyed, as Avraham journeyed through Canaan, he said to him, uh, and he journeyed through Canaan for what? To come to the place to Shaha or to worship Yah. Did he not, Israel? Yeah. He says unto him, I will give you all this land. It says, and there built Avram an altar unto Yah, who appeared unto him. And he moved from there to a, a mountain, as Enoch talks about this uh, place or, or this mountain of hard rock. Yeshua is rock of our salvation. He says, listen now, he says, on the east of Bethel, and pitch a tent. Having, uh, having the house of Yah. That's what Bethel is, isn't it? Isn't Bethel the house of Yah? Doesn't the word Bethel mean the house of Yah? Look where he pitched the tent. Raufel said that the mountain was on the west. Did he not say that? The strong insignia of Yah. And he pitched his tent. Having Bethel on the east, on the north, on the south, on the west. You say that that has no significance. Well, his house shall be called the house of prayer. In his house he has placed his name, Yisrael. And there was the house of Yah on the west. I want to read that again in Enoch. You just hold it. In Enoch 22.1. He said, I, I went to another place... Uh, and then Rufael, he showed me on the west. He showed me on the west. Where, was there not a great mountain there for Abraham? Did he not pitch his tent on the west where Bethel would be the place of where he would turn toward the house of Yah to worship Yah? He said, on the west side, a great and high mountain and hard rock. Oh, God in Genesis 12, 8, and he moved me from there to a mountain. Did not Enoch go to another place? Did not Yah move Avram? We must understand, Yisrael. We have become so sedated in our drunkenness. We have come to poverty. Our minds don't know how to receive the nutrition of Yah. He doesn't know how to receive the Pure correction, the Torah of Yah. These truths are comparative, incompatible. And he moved me from there to a mountain on the east of Bethel. So if Bethel is on the east of this mountain, and looking from the east, you look in west, you're going to see, uh, you're going to see the very instinct of Almighty Yah of Bethel. And he pitched his tent, having Bethel. The house of Yah on the west, and Hea, Hea is on the east. And there he built an altar unto Yah, and he called upon the name of Almighty Yahweh. Did he not build the altar there? The enemy knows that the altar of Yah is in the bosom of Yisrael. He knows that this altar... It is the representation, it is the, it, is the, it is the shadow of things that were to come Yisra'ya. That's what it is. We turn to the east because we are west of Yerushalayim. And because of our sins we have, we have been dispersed throughout the nations of the earth, Yisra'ya. He says on the east, uh, he saw the mountain. And that's the strong place of Yah. That's why we turn to the east. Because the, there is where the hair of the high place of Yah. And he built the altar there toward Bethel. Uh, and there he called upon the name of Almighty Yahweh. He called upon his name. Uh, he began to worship Yah. It has credence to me. It may not have credence to you. But it has credence to me. It has truth. 
It has insight. I will take us farther. Don't worry. I will not leave one stone unturned. When I finish it today, you will have just a little, as I will, of understanding. Hallelujah. And if you listen to this more than one time, you will understand it in a great way. And he says, I want to tell you what was inside Enoch 2, 22 2. He says, an inside is four beautiful corners. That has no relevant for, rele, uh, uh, relevance to us at all if we read that, does it? Just be honest. No, it doesn't. What does that imply? I, I was sure it's yesterday. We, his, we are his people. We destroy because we, we're ignorant. We like knowledge. He said, and inside of this hair, inside of this uh, strong tower, there were four beautiful corners. It had in it a deep, wide, and smooth things which was rolled over, and in the place was deep and dark to look inside. Could I ask you a question? Could anyone just handle the Ark of the Covenant? Could anyone touch that? No, they could not. Unless I give you understanding of what these four beautiful corners represent, it doesn't mean a damn thing, does it? That's how we read the book in a, in a scripted type form. Search the Torah. For in it you, you, you think you have eternal life. Uh, and you are the ones that testify of, of the power of Yah. So we must understand what is the beauty of these four corners. Uh, and what do they represent? What is concerning? We know that Yah, He has scattered Yisrael to the four corners of the earth. We know that, don't we? But here's something that is vitally important. We need to understand. In the book of Shema. In the book of Exodus. Turn quickly. Exodus 25. Hallelujah. This is the Ach. Of the Brits of Yah. Did he not say there were few, four beautiful corners? Did he not say that? I want you to hear this. This is what he saw. Exodus 25 verse 10. Your sister Moshe and they shall make an achron. An ach. A chess. The ark of the covenant. Where the covenant of the Brit of Yah. That's why the Zira of Cain cannot touch this. At the covenant. He tells them of the wood of Shittim wood. He tells them two cubits and a half shall the length of it be. And a cubit and a half the width of it. And a cubit and a half the height of it. Listen to this. Hear this. And you shall overlay it with pure gold. Within and without shall you overlay it, and you shall make upon it a zeri or a crown of gold round about. Verse 12. And you shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four abach. The four what? Four what? Corners, the four corners, the um, the four corners thereof. The two rings shall be in the one side of it, and the two on the other side, representing the broken house of the house of Israel. But he said, this ark has this abach, the four corners. And so what he saw, he saw this covenant of completion. Is what Enoch saw in the bosom of the true, complete Yisraelite, those that are birth of Yah, those that have not the seal or the number of six, six, six. It had its administration in the bosom of Kayan through the workings of deception and darkness. And we're going to see the mark of that because uh, it is in the countenance. It is going to be here or in their yard, in their hand, right? The yard represents uh, the, the strength of any man. And the, uh, and the brow or the head, uh, the rush represents what? An authority in that man. You can tell when someone expressed their anger upon you. You can tell when someone expressed their gladness, their rejoicing. You can't tell that. We're going to understand this thing in the, in the closure of the matters. Not today, but as we go by and by, a little at a time. So he said, uh, upon the four corners uh, of the ark. What does that represent? Uh, that even though that we are scattered to the four corners of the earth, uh, he still, still has in the ark, uh, through the power of the testimony of Yeshua, we can touch uh, the ark of the covenant uh, of Almighty Yah. 
We can embrace and we can lay hands on it. You touch the ark before the time of you died. We can touch the ark. Yahshua is that ark and the power of that testimony. It has gone through the four corners of the earth. And not by this religious whore. Not by Christianity. By the messengers that Yah ordained from his bosom. In Yahshua HaMashiach. Not by these damn mega whore houses. Not by these damn TD Jakes. And the faggot dogs. Eddie Long. And the grinning devils. Like this damn wicked man down here in Houston. What's his name? Osteen. And not these wicked whores, uh, these Jesuits, uh, like this uh, Pamela White, uh, and these vile serpents of hell. He said, the four corners. You know the Torah is so precise. This thing is true, Yisraya. What has this to do with 666? I will show you. I will show you. Just don't get ahead of yourself. We are people, we hear something, we get excited. All of a sudden... And then after a while, uh, we, we don't even remember what we heard. And we take that, trying to take bits and pieces, trying to explain that to someone else, and we mess them up. And then they take it and mess someone else up. We must have a thorough understanding. Yeah. We must get insight. You can't get Nasseria or, or, or any one of the little children to tell them to say ABCs without instructing them. And the more you instruct them, they rejoice in it. I'm in the Sipia. I know Sarah yeah, she will have a fit saying her ABCs. So you can't. And we as a nation of people, you don't understand the finite details of Yah. Someone telling you study the book for yourself. These are damn fools. That's what got us messed up now. Yah never left a book to Yisra Yah. He laid out a tribe, Levi. Yeah. You teach them and you instruct them. And when the surmise began to rise among them, uh, and when this pharisaic uh, mindset, uh, the superior mindset began to rise up, uh, more intellectual, uh, when they relied upon Yah, when they relied upon the covenant uh, of Avram, uh, they began to pursue other adventures uh, and began to inject their personalities. Uh, and then you had a people that were laden down with burdens uh, of all kinds of rites and writings uh, and rituals and processes and processes. Uh, whereby they can never find the comfort and the beauty of Yah Zahava. Whereby they never rejoice and it was a burden upon them. Uh, it was a shadow. You can't do away with a shadow. The shadow reflects uh, the beauty of what it represents. We have a shadow. You look at your shadow. That's me. In order to have a shadow, you must have a reality there. And the Torah's re reality was a shadow of the thing to come. It was a shadow of the power of Yah's strength among Yisrael, Yah, His manifestation. That's what it was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope this story is making sense. All right. I believe it's making sense. All right. Continuing on, all right. He says to the four corners, he says, upon the four corners... Why would, why would that be something that, uh, that must be attended to? That's why Yah showed Enoch these four corners to represent the four corners of the earth, to represent his Ach, the scattering of Yisrael to the four corners. He showed him things for us to understand. Don't discount the book of Hanak, Yisrael. Don't discount that. In verse 3 of Enoch 22, he says, uh, and at that moment, Rufu'el, Rufu'fa'el, one of the Chodash Melechim who was with me, he responded to me and said to me, he called them, he said, these beautiful corners are here in order that the spirits of the Re'achim, of the Nefesh, of the dead, shall assemble into them did not your shoe go down to the lower parts of the earth uh, and he declared unto them this message even that enoch declared uh, he went to set the captive uh, free israel he said this is the ruach him and i will show us that just bear with me for a moment he said they are created uh, so that the nephesh or the soul of the children of the people shall gather here and we as Yisrael, we gather under the covenant, under the bread that Yah has ordained with our forefather. Beginning with Abraham, the Ark, 
of his covenant, the Akh of his Brit, his treaty with Yisra'ya, his allegiance, his alliance unto us. He has an allegiance unto us. And we, he said, even those uh, that are dead and trespass in sin, uh, when this gate is opened, uh, when they see the beauty of the four corners, that's what he said, when they see the beauty of these four corners, uh, then they rejoice. Uh, when they see the beauty of Yisrael, yeah, they're in Britain, uh, they're in Bergshead, Scotland, uh, in the islands of the sea of America, scattered there in Russia, in Africa, in China. To the great corners. What are the great corners? The north, the south, the east, and the west. The four corners of the earth. Hallelujah. And we as the children of Yah, we shall gather in the, the breath of his covenant. That was one thing that uh, Kayan did not gather in. Was that not an appointed time? Did not Yah as the appointed time or the season come? Do we not have appointed times? Should we not gather in Yerushalayim? And these damn liars that say that the feasts or the Mo'adim of Yah are not validated. They are dogs. They are dogs. But it's one thing that Yah got it all under control. He's going to take care of business. Don't worry about anything. Hallelujah. He got it. He got it all under control. Hallelujah. See the beauty of these four quarters. If we as Yisra'ya, even though we were dead in trespasses and sin, when we see the beauty of this we rejoice in it greatly, Yisra'ya. We rejoice in that with great affection. Hallelujah. He talks about those that were dead, that were dead, and they should gather in that, and the nephesh of the children of the men should gather here. Verse 4. They prepared these places in order to put them, i.e., the nephesh of the people there until their judgment and the appointed time of the great judgment upon them. We know that in Gileana, Yakahan talks about the fifth seal that was broken. I want to read that quickly. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. The vision of Hanach. He says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, he said, I saw under the altar I saw under the altar of Yah the nephesh of them. He said, that's why this place is here. It is for the nephesh, the souls of them. that cry and wait for the judgment of Yah. He said, I saw the nephesh of them that were slain for the Torah of Yah, for the word of Yah. Revelation 6, 9. I saw them that were slain for the word of Yah. And for the testimony of Joshua, which they held. They were destroyed because of their loyalty to the Torah, to the witness of the testimony of Yeshua. He said, that's who I saw. Enoch, he saw so vividly, the witness of this Torah truth. He says in verse 10, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, how long, O Yah, Kodash and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood upon them that dwell upon the earth? The blood of Hebel cried. Hear me, Yisra'ya. His blood cried out of the earth. And Kayan said, I'm not supposed to know where he is. I'm not his guardian. He showed the blood of Hebel cried. And the blood of those that keep the Torah of Yah yeah. and the testimony of Yahshua. He saw it quite vividly. The same words spoke to Yahahana. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is what I saw. Enoch 22, verse 5 again. And I saw the Ruachim of the children of the people who were dead, and their voices reach unto heaven until this very moment. You see that? Did not Yakahan see that? But that has no relevance with 666. You just don't understand the book, Yisrael. You don't understand what it says. I saw them. And Yakahan said they cried with a loud, loud voice saying, Yeah, how long? There is something that must be judged. There is something that must be eradicated 
for the blood of the breath of your Christ. And it begins with the number of man six. It begins with the number of the beast. It began with the total uh, unison of that mind of the beast and man that creates one of the most depraved, vile minds and conscience that is adamantly against Yah, that rises up with hatred, that speak villainy against the Torah of Yah and speak with opposition and trying to rise up above the very Torah of Yah. There's something that cries out. There's something in the earth. We must find out. Yah has not left us in darkness. Because of our damn sins and our wickedness. Uh, and because of those that should lead us and guide us uh, into the truth of Yah by the Ruach HaKodesh. Uh, they have been, uh, they have succumbed to the lust of the world. What they call fine homes and cars and jewelry. Damn it all. Yeah. It's not even temple. The beauty of it fades in a moment. It doesn't take long for the beauty to fade. It doesn't take that long. You think it takes years. You go out and see the million dollar homes built today. Two years later you come back. It looks like nothing how the corruption of man. It just looks more doesn't it? That's a fact. We look for the city whose builder and maker is so mighty Yah. Any time the corrupt had a man lay his hands on, anything, it just looked corrupt and lose. Or oh, it may have, have a lust of today. You keep going back. You began to see the dullness. Uh, you saw that big old $52 million whole house they built in Charlotte. That was back in the days of Jim Baker. I remember going out. I wanted to see the thing. And the structure, the edifice was beyond descriptive superlatives. And I've gone back, passing through that way 10, 15, 20 years later. It looks like a damn ghost, wicked house. It looks like a stinking house of prostitution where every kind of host spirit is there. We must go back to the Tasneeth, to the pattern. And I must show you out of the pattern, not of some kind of religious osity. Hallelujah. I shall proceed. Hanak 22.6 And I ask... Raphael, the Melach, who was with me, and he said unto me, this is the voice, or this is the Ruachim, or the Ruach, or the voice of which is reaching into heaven, into Hashem Ha'am, like this, and making suit. Whose Ruach is it? Whose Ruach is this? Where has this come from? Hanak says in verse 7, and he said to me as Ru Rufa says to me, this, listen, those that cry out and those that we see under the altar, this is what he says. If you have the book of Hanach, this is important to read. Get the book. Look at what he says. He said, what is this? Those that are under the altar of Yah, they, they, they cry out and they cry out. Uh, the blood of Habel cries out. He says it like this when he asks, what is this? Tell me the spirit. And he says unto him in Enoch 22, 7, he answered and he said to me saying, this is the Ruach which had left Chabel, Chabel, Abel, whom Cain, his brother, had killed. Listen now, this is what's going to cry out to when. It continues to pursue him. That Mark continue to pursue the breath of Yah. Hear this. It continues to pursue him until all kol, kol, ka'an, si, be exterminated from off the face of the earth. Does the cry still cries out under the altar of Yah? We see the generation of Ka'an down to the sixth generation. And somewhere the powers that be the birth of hell out of that mind. It began to, to mask itself throughout the lineage of man. And he said the, the, the Melach of Almighty Yah. Raphael said unto Hanaka, You hear the cries of the breath of Hebel. 
under the altar of Yah. And these nephes, those that, that cry, they have the same breath of heaven. It cannot stop until the zira, the seed, not of Esau, but of Kayan. It must be exterminated out of the earth. He that have wisdom and understand, let him count the number of a man. Six. You hear that? Six. Where are these voices coming from? These cries. What Yokohan saw in Gilyana. He said the voices continue to cry out. It is the breath of it is the life that which has been breathed from Yah into Hebel. Into Hebel. It is that voice that cries out until the Zira, the seed. Was Kayan a liar? Was he a murderer? Did the truth dwell in him until the Zira of Hebel? It must go. That's why Yah says, I don't want you to touch a damn thing that I've marked. He says, preacher man, take your damn hands off, I'll kill you dead. He said, take your Jezebel mouth off, I will exterminate you. Take your damn hands off. There are things that I... He said, hear this lineage. That you don't know where this lineage is. But I know. See, I put my breath in that damn piece. And I cut his generation over the sixth generation. That there will be no identity given to it. It is the number of a man, the generation of six generations. We better hear the Torah of Yah. This is not how the whole houses teach it. These damn liars that find some book some pervert has written. Oh, it takes labor. And the sad part, I don't have the time to labor like I want to. I really don't. Because if I had that, I could make it even more precise, believe me. It takes hours upon hours and hours of time. Can I read that again? There are things that Yah, and I will show an example. When that mark of man and the mark of the beast and the mark of that Leba, that mind that has united with great hatred against Yah, Yah says, take your damn hands off of it. Leave it alone. Preacher boy, don't even touch it. Leave it alone. That's mine. Get your damn dirty hands off of it, man. I want to read this again. Hallelujah. Yeah. He was asked, What are these? Who are these? This ruach, this cry I hear that reaches into the heavens and that make it suit or pursuing Yaya. When are you going to vindicate us? And the messenger that Yah had dispatched, he said, he answered me saying, This is the spirit which had left Chabel, the breath of Yah, the vapor, Chabel, whom Chayan slew, he harach, he murdered, he lied on, he lied against. His ak had killed, he killed him. He said the cry of that ass, Habel's blood cries out. It continues to pursue him until all Chayan's see be exterminated from the face of the earth. And his seed has disintegrated from among the seed of the people. He must be destroyed. He must be. The zero of Chayan must be destroyed. We hear men talk much about Isaac, but we may need to understand the zero of, of Kayan. Why is it cut off in the sixth generation? Because it is the mark of a man. That's the power of life. And yet six generations he knew that there would be no power of the breath of his life in this vile damn beast. That's why a righteous man, a Sadiq man, he not fall seven times. He suffered the violence of persecution and death until the Torah of Yah is perfected. And the only way is by the revelation of Yahshua. Hamashiach, I pray you we grasping a little of this. I'm laboring hard.
No, sir, you cannot buy books and read enough to find this. You have to find it from the book and search how every word, because every word is a treasure. You got to search every word. You can't search a few words. You must search every word. Because every word that Yah speaks is pure. And we that his ebet or his evet, my servants, we trust in that and we take confidence and consolation in what he says. Every zira of Ka'an must be exterminated from off his zira. He has found a way through the through the subtleties of him to disguise himself in the midst of a people to integrate within Yisraya. And that's why we are people that murmur, we complain. It is the sure number of a man. And we must go back and search the Torah and find the number or the identity of the birth that came forth out of Adom and Chava. You understand Yisraya? We must understand that Yisraya. They cry out, the Nefesh, until the whole Zira, the seed of Habel, be exterminated from off of the earth and be cleansed. It must be cleansed from that seed. His seed is only mentioned to the sixth generation. This is a prophecy for our time. He saw those crying under the altar of Yah in Gilyana. So somehow, through some kind of force of darkness, his seed has progenerated. And so what Yachahan saw, he saw the crying of those saying, How long, Yah? How long shall this stand? How long shall Kayan this 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 uh, eviscerated spirit this hatred toward you have dominance in the earth how long because it is the same spirit that continues to pursue the breath of almighty yah hebel is the breath of the life of yah he is uh, he is what uh, brings forth and he was the one that brought forth the light and the beauty of yah the pleasure to to bring at the appointed time the offering unto yah at the season unto yah that's why the more dims are important yisra'ah they must begin to take precedent among yisra'ah we must lay aside some of these uh, wicked individuals they will go to every kind of damn park uh, they will take their grandbabies to every kind of damn wicked thing. Uh, but to bring them to Yah's uh, feast of gathering, uh, they are Jezebels and, the, and their husbands are weak, cowardly men. Yes. They take them to every kind of damn ball game. Yes. I'm going to teach one day how we train our children. I don't give a damn if you don't love me. You don't love Yah. Kayan did not love Yah. He lied to him. We will lie to Yah to his face. We will lie and cover a lie. At least in my days, uh, when our conscience, when my, when our parents would say, "You lied," no man, no man, boy, I'm going to get you. You better tell me to yes, ma'am, I did it, yes, ma'am. And now the conscience is so, so vile. Now uh, they don't even, they don't even speak that because uh, the ultimate number, the ultimate is six, the last of the six. The ultimate is the last of the six. The Sodom, we see the, we, we see the, we see the very, uh, the, the very number of man and the number of beasts. This is going to culminate when I finish. We're going to understand the very dynamics uh, of the latter six, uh, of the six, six, six. You understand? Uh? And that's why the power of hell uh, will cause all men, both small and great, uh, rich and powerful. Don't let these damn bastards of hell uh, tell you to buy gold and silver. You dirty children of hell, you lying, damn corrupt man that call yourself a messenger, telling people to buy gold and silver. It doesn't mean they're going to cast, cast their kesema into the streets, you damn dirty bastard. Yeah. You buy the truth, Yisraya, and you don't sell the truth, these damn dirty dogs. Yeah. These bastards out of hell. Yeah. Damn them all. Yeah. You shut your heart from these damn dogs. Yeah. Buy silver by gold, you a dirty damn liar. You are a bastard and I will challenge you. I will debate you all day. Well, we don't debate. I know you're a coward. You know, there are those that say that he called other cowards. And these are these bastards that have turned against me because I won't talk to them. 
damn them. I'm not talking to them, you understand that? And they couldn't handle me no way in any kind of debate. The ones that have come here and heard we have heard, could not any of them handle me when it comes to that. When they, when they, when they meet me, they find a real man. You see, many of them thought that they had something, but when they meet me, they realize they don't have a damn thing. And you can't stay in the kitchen too long because it gets hot and you must come up out of the kitchen. As the old folks would say, the kitchen gets hot. You can't stay in the kitchen too long. That kitchen gets hot during the summer, doesn't it? I will, my friend. And so they run like coward dogs. These men telling you to buy silver and gold, it is the mark of a man. They're trying to save themselves. Your shall your shach Yisrael. That's why with Yosef they went into Misraim. Seventy of them they didn't have a damn thing. Didn't have bread to eat. Didn't have nothing. But Yah provided, did he not? He's going to have to make an escape for his people. He's going to have to show us his power is true. And this is his last demonstration of his power. It will not be done or gone, Yisrael. So it is us that the dharma of those that cry of the blood of Hebel cries out. And come on, his zero, he must, that is the terror of the earth. They want to say it's Esau, no, it's the, it is Kayan. It is Kayan. I'm going to teach that. I don't want to get ahead because it's all vital. You'll understand. I may not get it all, don't. Listen to me. I began to teach something like this. I see hundreds of messages in one scripture. And I just can't continue in one path. I wish I had that ability like this. I can't do it. I wish I hate that about me. I hate it. Because I know that is as vital as what I'm teaching you now. That. I know it has the same significance and the same uh, vitalness, Yisraya. I wish I could do it, y'all, but I cannot. So y'all just pray. I had, uh, I said, uh, we're looking forward to the teaching. I can't wait till you get back to the, to the two witnesses. Hallelujah. I literally have hundreds of messages that I've never taught. And, and, and probably don't even know how many I have. They probably will never teach them. But it's all right if I compile all of them and make a book and just nothing but scripture and some word meeting. Let the ark preach them. What's wrong with that? Do the Baptists do that? Do the Church of God and Christ do that? There's some that's laid out for the time. They have them laid out. They have the little book. Preach on this on this Sunday. Preach on this on that Sunday. Yeah, they do that. I want to move on, Yisraya, because I want to close with one last thing for today. I don't want to Give us too much of this fatness, all right? Yeah. We want to bring the offering like Hebel. He brought not only the first land, but he brought the fat too. Yeah. The fat belongs to Yah, didn't he say that? Yeah. He brought the fat, didn't he? Yeah. We got to bring some of this fat. Come on, you praise him. Praise Yah. We got to praise him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I want to show you this. The zira. Or the seed of Chayan. They must be. Uh, they must be disintegrated among us. We cannot integrate with them. That's where it must go. From among the seed of Yah's people. I want to show you a profound vision. That Yah shows us uh, the destruction of Yahushalayim. What's in Yahushalayim. That spirit of Chayan. And he gives us a very pointed revelation here as the Nobi Yeskel Ezekiah, as he cries out. It was when the, when the presence of Yah departed from Yerushalayim or his people. Did not Yah depart from Cayenne? Did he not go away from the presence of Yah? Did not Cayenne go away from the presence of Yah? We must have line upon line and precept upon precept here a little bit. And he went and Kayan went from the presence of Omar Yah. He went from the Ponim, from the face of Yah. And so when the Ponim or the presence of Yah departs from a people, depart from them, it's because there is a, there, there, there's a root of the, of the zira of Kayan in the midst of that people. I'm telling you, Yisrael, look at, look at this profound vision of Yeskel, Ezekiah, chapter 9. Hallelujah. And verse 1, I want to begin reading uh, 
He omade ya he kara. When Yah cries out, even the heavens are awakened. His creation is awakened. He said, and he cried in my azen, my ear, my natural ear. He said, with a loud voice. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to hear me, Yisraya. He said, cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Tell them to come on, I beckon them. He said, I want every man to have his destroying weapon in his hands. There are things that Yah must do. Hear this. He says, listen to this. It is the sign, it is the numeric, numerology to show the incompleteness of man. He did not ask for seven men, but he says in verse 2, and see six men. Does it say six? Does it say six? Yes. Six men, they came from where? The way. They came from the order of the Torah. That's what the Torah is called, uh, the way. We must walk in uh, haderach, in the way, or derech, in the way. Uh, we must halach, halach, traverse in the way. He said there were six men. Those that handled the Torah, they were incomplete. Uh, but yet because the voice of Yah spoke, when Yahshua speaks unto us, it makes us complete in Almighty Yah. Because it is the power of the living Torah that justifies us. Can we do all things through Yahshua that gives us strength? We can do all things. And there were six men. Not seven. Not three. Not four. This six identifies the judgment of a depraved, wicked mind of man. It identifies the very seat of the one, of the beast. A mind that is adamantly against you and seeks to destroy and seeks to bring it to death. So they had to come from the way. They had to come by the order of Torah. They had to be men that their minds were pure, they were dedicated to Yah. And these were men that came, they came from the way of the higher gate which is toward the north. And every man a slaughtering weapon in his hand. And one man among them, the power, the revelation of Elijah, Yoshua, was clothed with the purity of linen. And he had the writer's ink horn by his side. And they went in and they sat or they stood beside the brazing altar of Almighty Yah. He called for them because the number six, it, it represents the most vilest of evil. It shows a mind that is incomplete without the knowledge of Torah, a mind that has no substance of Torah, Yisra'ya. It is the symbol or it is the numeric Symbology of man. And we must understand without the testimony of Yahshua, we're going to fail. And that's why we find those that say they're Hebrews, they deny Yahshua. And yet, what about all the other books that the Torah talks about that are the missing books? Who are they? And yet they discount the Brit Hadassah. These are damn fools. And the damn leaders are fools. Yah has always manifest his, himself among us. Yisraya. They are not Yisraya. That's why he have not mattered. Show me a place where he did not. Please do that. And this was the last sign. As your as Yonak was in the belly of the world three days and three nights. Uh, so shall the son of Yah. That's why the Torah is so high. It extends to the throne of Yah. You can't go. Over. It's so low. It went down to the depths of hell, isn't it? So why you cannot reason with all of your intellectual reasoning and all of your deduction from Torah, you cannot go around what he says. You can't get around your shoe. You may try, but you cannot, my friend. I don't take that back. Hallelujah. Verse 3. It says, And the Kabur, the splendor of Yah, of Yisra'ya, was gone up from the Kerub, whereupon he was. To the threshold of his house, Beit Bethel, 
And he called to the man, to the man clothed with the linen, and the one that had the keseth or the inkhorn by his side. And Yah said to him, Please hear me, Yisraya, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Yerushalayim. He says, I want you to set a dav. It's the difference between the dav, the mark, the uth, then the tav. And he said, I want you to set a tav, a mark, upon those that are exempt from judgment. Those that are exempt from judgment, as I began in the beginning, we have been sealed by the Ruach HaChodash. You think that the Ruach just come alive with Yahshua? Come on, Yisrael, yeah? The Ruach HaChodash was in Hebel. And it is that Ruach in us. When Yahshua went down into the midst of hell, those that were of the zero of promise, they cried out in that captivity until they were brought forth into the bosom of Abraham and the promises of Yah. Yeah. He said, you go and you mark, Tav. Who? You mark upon the forehead or the mesach, the forehead. You understand? So the mark thing is nothing new. On the forehead of the men, first of all, that sigh and that cry for the to abar the filthiness, the abomination that is done in the midst thereof. Is this not Yah's creation? Has he scattered us to the four corners of the earth uh, and the vileness of the abomination that's done in the midst, not only in a nation, but in the midst of our minds, in the place whereby we should dwell in Yerushalayim, where we are taught the shalom of Yah. That should be in our mind. He said, you mark them, you tav. You put a mark on them, say, exempt from judgment. That's why we're still with the Ruach. I don't want to be still with the damn Holy Ghost. Give me the Ruach HaChodash. Give me the breath of Yah. We're sealed until the day of redemption. Until the day of Gu'Allah. Until the day of our redemption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You put the mark upon them. And to the others, he said, in my hearing, he said, I can hear it. He said, I want you to go after them through the city. And look at this. This is very descriptive. I want to read this. Yeskel 9.5. This is the one that made us. And to the others he said in my hearing, go after them through the city. He says, and I want you to naka. I want you to beat them. I want you to butcher them like dogs. To kill, to destroy, to annihilate. I want you to naka. I want you to naka to kill. He said, Let not your eyes, hoods, don't look with any kind of pity of remorse. Don't consider, you consider what I speak to you. Don't look upon them with that. He said, I don't want you to even have hamal, any kind of pity, any kind of consideration at all. And look what Yah instructs in verse 6. He said, I want you to harag. He said, damn it, kill them all. I want you to destroy. Was not Ka'an a murderer? He said, I want you to murder them, the seed of Ka'an. Yah cannot lie, can he? Be not deceived, Yah is not mocked. For whatsoever man so that shall he all. Did Ka'an so the spirit of murdering? For whatsoever man so that shall he also what reap? He said, I want you to go through Yerushalayim. And I want you to harach. I want you to kill every damn one of them. He said, I want you to harach. I want you to kill beginning at the zakhin, the old ones. The damn stubborn ones. The vile ones. I want you to kill them all. Damn it, kill all the old wicked ones. Kill the crippled ones. I say that for demonstration and for dramatics that we understand the realness of Yah. I'm not trying to say it to be, to be disrespectful of old people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm showing you the volume and the magnitude of his speech. He said, damn it, kill them. Damn their gods, damn them all! 
I want you to be gone. But the damn old wicked ones. Kill them all. You've never been a mother to the bath of Tislam. You've been a damn Jezebel. You've been a damn slutty Jezebel. You've been a damn old fool, man. You love the clown and jackass. Like, like a damn jigaboo. I will, friend. He said, kill it. Kill them all. He's a hot ride. Kill. She's 92. Kill her. Damn it, I don't give a damn killer. I'm saying that they show you how y'all is. He said, don't have no chama. I don't want you to have no pity. I don't want you to have no hoots. I don't want you to spread. This is y'all. He means what he says, Yisra'ya. He means what he said. He said, damn it, you began there and killed the old ones. He said, I want you to kill the bachor. I want you to kill the young, especially the young men. The young men of the Ru'ak of Kayen, are they not murdering young men? Don't we see that among those of the diasporas, men that murder like damn dogs, it is the nature of a Kayen. It is the sign and the seal of the six. The number of a man. Their hearts are so cold toward each other, they hate each other over damn pair of tennis shoes. They hate each other over damn slut that sleeps with everyone. And the sluts hate each other because they're sleeping with sluts and they are sluts. You understand? They're not worth a damn two, two, uh, two false nickel whore. And these vile, effeminate, faggot boys, uh, they're not worth a damn. He said, I want you to kill the Baha, the young, the young boys. Damn it, kill them all. That's why our forefathers are those that know the new yard crowd. They're crying. And the zero of Kayan, that first mark, that first six must be taken care of. And that second six, that mind by having the mind of Yahshua, a man that hates Yah, that rises up against Yah. And the ultimate depravity, only one can handle that. He is a man of war. And he rides from the heavens in the power of Yahshua. He's going to handle it all. Does it make sense? Sure it does. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to kill the youth. He said, both Beth Ula. Oh, I, I was a virgin when I got married. He said, kill them damn whores. Like I said to you, it doesn't mean a damn thing because you were Beth Ula. When you got married. It doesn't mean a damn thing. But our minds are so damn convoluted. We are vile. We do things that are so mischievous. We create such damn wickedness and evil. He say, kill the best Ula. Kill the dirty horse. Kill the faggot boys that think because I, I, I'm a virgin. You had enough sex in your damn mind. You looked upon women. You lost in your damn wicked heart. You, you have committed sin, man. Oh, people think that's a, that's, a, that's a pure sign today. It doesn't mean a damn thing. You understand? We are made pure by the hearing of the Torah of Yah. So if all virgins had value, then why would he say, kill the virgins? He said, I will. He said, kill the virgins, the Beth Ulam. And this has always been something that when I read this, he said, and I want you also to kill the tough, the little children, those that are weak. Tough is the weaker ones. He said, kill them all. Kill their babies. Because there is where the zira of Chayan springs forth from. It springs forth out of that zira. And the children continue to perpetuate. He said, damn it, kill the babies. Cut them out of the bellies of the mamas. Stomp them down to the depths of hell. That's not Yah, it isn't. He causes winds to blow and it destroys every damn thing. He caused the violence of the heavens and the earth to shake. And he killed babies when that tsunami came through in the islands. It did not say take the babies out. It killed every damn thing, the animals and all. When Yah caused the heavens to pour out water and the earth to break up fountains, uh, He did not just say, uh, bring all the babies in the ark. He killed every last damn one of them. Because it was the very zero, the sign, 
and the very nature of Kayanda, and through all of that, it found its way back into the lineage of man. And Yah says, I got it. I'm going to send my one last witness, Yahshua. And then I will send, send it in the mouth of my two witnesses uh, to, give a, uh, to give certainty to, to him. Uh, and then it's in my hand. You all step back. The play is over. It's time for the curtains to close. I, I can't wait for that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, you killed them all. He said, the women. Uh, he said, but come not near to the, upon the man who my tar of the mark. He said, I want you to begin, first of all, at my mikdash place, my chadosh place, my house. He said, and then they began at the ancient man, the older man. The man that's supposed to be seasoned. The men that have no rejoicing of you. Come on, elderly men. I want to say this to you. When you have nothing in your heart to, to rejoice in you, when you are stiff and stymied, something is twisted in your damn mind. I don't give a damn what we call you, Zakin. I don't give a damn what we call you. Something is wrong in your damn mind. When the only thing you can do is maybe like this to Yah every now and then. Something is twisted in your damn mind. You have no fervor for Yah. When there is nothing in your feet every now and then, I don't give a damn that, that you move for Yah. Something is twisted in your heart, man. Something is not ready. Come on, my Ema. When, when there is no excitement about Yah, when there is no my, He said, I want you to begin at the mid of ancient. Uh, they should set the pattern. We should set the order. We should show the young men. We should show the little daughters. Uh, he said, I want you to start there. Start there. With the man of ancient. We said, what the God and show them. Uh, we're not supposed to sit back on our eyes. Uh, we're supposed to show them the dynamics uh, and the power of this. Uh, Hell, nothing ever excites you about God. Yeah. He said, Begin with the men of ancient. When Yah removed the ancient men from the house, it was woe unto the people. It was woe unto Yisrael. He removed the knowledge, he removed judgment. We see that with Shalomo. Hallelujah, with uh, Rehoboam. He said, Hell, I'm not going to listen to the old men, I'm going to listen to those that are my equal. And he caused a great divide, a split of, cat- of tatamont, diabolical scheme in the house of Yisrael. We need the ancient men. We need the older men. We need the old men. We need to see the example. We can have damn old moody men. The side of Kayan, a murdering spirit. You can see it in that damn brow. You can see the side of, the, of their identity sex. You know that, that I'm my old man. You're not a damn man. You're not even a faggot. You weak imbecile of a thing. Yes, and why is your countenance fall, be fallen? Not fall. Why is there violence in your countenance? Hell, our forefathers could see in our countenance and say, boy, what's wrong with you? Man, what's wrong with you? Oh, ain't nothing wrong. No, you can, you're a liar. Something wrong with you. I can tell. I can look at your countenance. You say that to people today. Well, nothing wrong with me. Well, hell, you're a liar. There were those that are here. I'm glad they're gone. I'll be honest. I won't call names. But you can look at this one individual's countenance. It was one of the most wickedest countenance you can look at. Just, it is the truth. You can defend the damn wicked. I won't. Hallelujah. Only thing uh, Kaya had to do was get it right. He didn't get it right. These damn wicked men. You think they care for you? They don't give a damn. You think they will watch for you? you we are jackass, ignorant people. Hallelujah. It's just like one that their parents, because they thought their parents or parent was or were hard, and they lead them, and they're going to get with their friends, and think because their parents said this, their parents said tough things, and they go out with their friends, let them go to jail and see what the damn friends are. See how they fade. And old mama, she will go, I watched my mother, I would say, that woman, my natural brother, when he was in prison all them years, when he got out, he didn't, he didn't sit down and, and buy the woman a damn fat back dinner. And that woman went when she was sick and when she didn't feel well. She would save all her money and go see him. And all his damn friends over all them 13 years, hell, they didn't give a damn about him. And you think these bastards care for you? You find yourself in a spiritual predicament. You will see how they will fall away from you. They don't give a damn. They don't give a damn. Hallelujah. He says, I want you to begin with the man of ancient. Right there. I want you to begin with the man of ancient in my bayat. 
And he said, he said to me, he said, I want you to tell me, I want you to defile the bed. I want you to show how unclean the house is. It's like a miniature woman's rag. It's not the bed of y'all unclean. Are we not the dwelling place of the Ruach HaKodesh? It is unclean. We allow every kind of damn thing in it. This is the representation of how we have defiled the house of Yah. He said, and fill the courts with the dead, with the slain. He said, go now. And then they went forth and they slew in the city. And it came to pass while they were slaying them. Yeskel said, I was left. And I fell on my face and I cried and said, ah. He cried. He said, Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Will you destroy all the Sheerith? The residue, the remnant, the remainder of Yisrael in the pouring out of your chema upon Yerushalayim. And he said to me, Yah says, he said the iniquity of Beit Yisrael and Yahuda is exceedingly great. And the iniquity of man, the mark, it is a mark and uth of man six i will deal more in depth with the mark of the b6 next week is the mark of a man we must have wisdom it is man's intuition it is his heart hallelujah he said they're all vaunt that the pray the depravity the depraved mind are so wicked they can it cannot even uh, comprehend what i speak it has no loyalty to me at all it is depraved. It is abominable. He says so great and the land is full of every kind of sin. Every kind of vile thing. The blood of Hebel cries out. It cries out. He said and the city is full of mutes. It is full of perverseness. It is a warped perverseness. It is not just their perverse. They are warped in their thinking, their minds and all. For they say, Yah have forsaken the earth. And Yah sees us not. Did not Kayan say that? Yah doesn't see me. When Yah says, where's your brother? He said, am I his keeper? I don't know. Why in the hell you ask me? You know everything. That's how people talk. Yah knows when I talk like this, it is, to, it, is to bring the, it is to bring the fullness of the impact of focus. Yah knows that I will not talk. I didn't even talk to my mother like this. And she was a natural creature. Well, you say all the time, I would tell my mother. I've never called my mother a whore or a slut. I would say to her when she would dishonor her own daughter, I would say, mother, if you call her that, she has three babies by three different men. You've had six, then what does that make you? I would never tell my mother you're a dirty whore. I would never tell, even though a woman is a whore, I would never say you're a dirty whore. I speak against that spirit. And I'm not going to stop on that. But I've never said that to my mother. I've never talked to my mother that way. You think I talk to Yah any kind of way? I'm not stupid. I'm a foolish man, but I'm not that sottish. You understand? I make the rot. But it is to bring clarity and to bring your minds to a place whereby you can comprehend and cut through all the bush. As they would say, all the bull shysting. Cut through all that bull. Cut through all of it. As someone said that all everywhere that man's mouth he curse. Just cut through all the bullshit. All right, that's what it is. Is that cursing shit? You damn fools. Hallelujah. He said, Yah. They said, Yah have forsaken the earth and he sees us not. And as for me also, my eyes. Yah says, I want to let you know, yes, I understand your tears. He said, I want to show you me. He said, as for me also, my eyes shall not hoots. It shall not spare. I will not have compassion. Neither will I have hamal. I will have no pity. I will not have a sense of emotion. He said, but I will repay their way upon their head. Their way. Did not he repay the way of Kai'an upon his head? He went from the presence of Yah, didn't he? 
It is the sure sign of the mark of man. That there is no presence of Yah in that man. When you find a bath of Tezai and she has been birthed by the Ruach of man, you will find she will lie, she will cheat, she will be a murderer, she will hate the truth, she will hate someone that speaks the truth, she will do every kind of damn wicked thing there is to do. You find a man that is so shallow, so damn weak, he will lie, he will murder, he will kill, he will tell you a lie knowing he hates you. I don't give a damn if you don't care about me. You are reaching down his hands uh, and pulling you out of the fire of hell, Yisrael. Yeah. He said, we will pay their way upon their head. And behold, I like this part of all things. And behold, the man clothed in the linen or the inkhorn. I be mean, this man is Yeshua. Not only does this man represent Yeshua, but he represents Yisrael. For we, the name Yisrael, they that prevail in Yah. And he came with the writer's inkhorn, which had the inkhorn by his side. He reported the matter, saying, I have done as you have sava, as you have commanded me. Only Yisrael can do as Yah command, and only Yahshua. And that's what we, Yisra'ya Yaakov, was a man. His name was changed to Yisra'ya. When the very nature and the spirit of the monk of Kayan did not prevail in him. Esau is just the offspring. He is a zira that has, that has permeated the earth out of the bosom of Kayan. The monk. The beginning, the mark of man, the mark of the beast. We will continue from this point on next Shabbat. I am cutting off abruptly. May the riches of your rest upon you. I am tired. Hallelujah. May his strength fill your bosom. I do pray that you all, uh, as my Zachim will say, that you all were blessed. Whether you were blessed or not, it makes me no difference. I'm telling you, I'm just being honest with you. Hallelujah. If I labor here and you, you're not blessed, then more unto you. I simply pray that this simple truth or the simplicity of it, and someone's out there listening, if it made any sense, write to me and tell me. Hallelujah. You show me my error. If you think I'm in error, show me. You show me where I've faltered in this approach, show me. You can't show me that. This is too simple. Fool can understand this. And you probably don't even search the book the way I do. You're not bo no, I'm not boasting. I'm just saying you. That's, these are the ones that will always try to challenge you. Ones that have no knowledge of truth. You're not going to tell me you have a knowledge of truth when you sit down and eat and watch television all day. You are smoking dope and running women and all of that. You're not going to tell me that. I will rehash some of this and get into, get into some of the most finite details of this Yisraya. Above all things, I want you. Wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you're getting, I want you to get understanding. I want you to understand this, Yisra'ya. I want you to get an understanding that you will discern because when the witnesses of Yah, when the power of that witness is, is, is revealed, you won't even know. That's why there is an assault by the mind of Kayan, this mark of man, to destroy any worth that Yah has put in man. Yah is still going to use man. He has still, he has chosen man. I don't give a damn. We have we that are sadiq, we have fallen seven times. A, a righteous man that falls seven times. He, have, he has succumbed to the violence of death, to the violence of his own self assaulting him and killing him. That's why seven times. There's six things that y'all hate, doesn't it? And the seven is an abomination. We're going to deal with all of that. We're going to show you the mark of man, the mind of man, the mark of the beast, Yisraya, and the combination of this mind uh, that is marked. It is in the brows of man. Uh, there's a mark that's strength of the hand uh, is based upon the power of that government. Damn the Pope! And this might, it doesn't mean a damn thing because the, the, the words he creaked, the 666 in his damn might, uh, and these jackasses, weak men uh, that have read what somebody else has wrote, that's what they teach. Uh, well, you know, it's the Pope, this is the Pope, this is the guy, this is the Pope, you don't know a damn thing. Yeah. You're bold, man. I know I'm bold. I'm brazen, too. I am. Yeah. I am bold. Yeah. And I am brazen. Yeah. You think you're arrogant? No, I'm not arrogant, but I have a dignity. You understand that? And, 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 and I want you to know that. You both said, no. I make my boast in your shoe. All right, beautiful. We'll get you all. Then join us. You're on the live stream. Do assist us on that. Just click that little button. 
Set it all free that we can't stay on life. Hallelujah. Yeah. They will sing this song. Running on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know why I sing that song all the time? Because the little ones like it. They like running. Papa, sing running on. Don't want me to sing it in the diet. It takes a little energy to sing that song. Run and run Running in your shoe. Oh, I'm running in the name. Give me my timber. Of your shoe. Ah, give me my timber. Running, running, running. Oh, I'm running. Running in the name of Yahweh. Come on. I'm running, running to see the yeah. Oh, I got no shoe. Oh, my, my. Running in his name. Oh, I'm running, running, running. In the name of Yahshua. Oh, I'm running to see the end. I don't know my which way to go. Oh, I run in the name of Yahshua. I got Yahshua in my mind. That's all right with me. Oh, I'm running, running in Yahshua's name. That's all right. That's all right. Let us remain standing in all things, my Abba. Turn toward Yerushalayim. Yeah. We do barak you this Shabbat, this blessed day you have granted unto us. For let your light shine, your oa, the revelation of Torah, the beauty of Torah, the desire, the passion of Torah. In Yisra, ya heal us. Arach Yahuba therein. Jacksonville, we do pray that he was able to join us. We pray for all Yisraya, your people. Yah, you know what we're in need of. Above all things, we need your truth. Make it simple to us. Explain it. Raise up your messengers, the true Navi'im, the Nabi, the prophet. Raise them up. For we need a prophet among Yisrael to set the house in order. We know, need those to judge. For when the judges died, then Yisrael went back into all kind of their depravity. And the enemy has taken this twisted Holy Ghost and used it for your Ruach HaKodesh. We know that the Ruach HaKodesh brings judgment. And we must have judgment among our people. Help us all, I do pray, and guide us in all things. Give us rest and comfort on this Shabbat. We told that you for all things. Heal us until we're healed. And save us that we know we're saved. We ask all things in the blessed assurance of the only name given. The name of Yahshua HaMashiach. And with our voices we cry, Hallelujah. 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 Yabrak Yisraya. Yabrak.